On this episode of Life in the Carolinas, I'm a man with a mission. I've got to find something special for a special friend. And I thought, who better to join me than my buddy and infamous collector himself, Ken Welburn. Morning, Carl. Morning, Ken. How you doing? Real good. I hope you are. I'm doing great. I know it's a little early for us to get together, but are you ready? Would five pounds of flour make a big biscuit? I was born ready. Let's go. I think it would. Come on. <laughs> How about this car? Oh, Ken, you did a great job on this. This was fantastic. Well, my friend Rex Brown out in Raven Falls has this beautiful 46 Chevrolet he's made available to us, and we're going to have a great day in it. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Let's take off. Our mission begins right now. Closed captioning for this episode of Life in the Carolinas is brought to you by Piedmont Music with locations in Charlotte and Winston-Salem and online at piedmontmusiccenter.com. Every Carolina home should have a piano. Life in the Carolinas is brought to you in HD by Hampton Inn & Suites at Phillips Place. I have a lot of friends who have made it their mission in life to collect and preserve the past. Ken Welburn is one of those. Another is my good friend, Tom Eisenhower. Ken, what I'm looking for is something for Tom's private collection. You know, he has a big collection of TV memorabilia, old TV shows. I remember Tom from the when I came down to the Don Gibson Theater in Shelby. Right. He and his group, they did a wonderful job. And I was fascinated by that outfit he had on. Nudie suits. Nudie suits, they call them. Yes, right. oh yeah. Fascinating fella. Wonderful musician. And a great musician, but he's also a great collector. Ah. I asked him if he could use anything for his collections, and he said, well, Carl, you'll be lucky if you can find anything I don't already have. Uh, nothing like a challenge, is there? That's, <laughs> That's right. That's right. So I'm hoping Cookie's got something uh, uh, to hook us up on that. Our first stop took us to the town of Pilot Mountain, where I knew of a very special antique shop. All right, here we are. Let's go okay. see if Cook is in. I hope she's here. Well, I can see from here, we might not find Tom anything, but we sure will find plenty for me. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid it'd be a problem for you again. <laughs> well, hey, Cookie. Hey, how are you? I'm good, how you doing? Cookie and her husband, Frank, own and operate Pilot here. Mountain Antiques, a shop where you can find, well, just about any old thing. This is my friend, Ken. Hi, Ken. Nice well, to meet you both, Cookie Ken. and Frank. Frank, nice to good meet to you. Good to see you. Good to Beautiful see you. place here. Well, thank you. Well, have you got anything, uh, that uh, you might want to show us that's anything new in house. I know you're so we old. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Ken, come on around. Come on. Let's uh, let's go now, over I here. I got to tell you something, Cookie. Ken has been known to get attached to, to older things. He has a couple of small things in his collection. Let's just say I like all things old, odd, and eclectic. For example, this Victrola. This is a gorgeous piece here. Could we hear it? Sure. OK. I have an old Victrola in my place we play every day. Here we go. Does it put wow. you in the dancing mood? It does. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Pretty neat, isn't it? Look at that. Amazing. And the beauty of this thing is they made it to work. They did everything as good as they could possibly do it. Okay, we could stand here all day. <laughs> yeah, we could. Cookie showed us a few things like this. That's a nice piece. That's an interesting piece. I have an old soda fountain. Mm -hmm. Those are like chicken's teeth. They're hard to find. And like this. It's an old projector. Or it's good that you're saving that because those are the kind of things, as new ones came out, this threw them away. If I'm hearing correct, you need that. Oh, I need lots <laughs> of things, man. I'm a fish just to be reeled in. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. I'm hearing everything wow. you say you have. My question is, do you have any money to spend? Pocket full. Come on, <laughs> I'm going to continue showing you around this. You're dangerous, Ken. I knew that you were going to happen. <laughs> We've got more over here. What's best to do is y'all look over here. We also okay. have a downstairs. Okay. If you need me, holler. They've got several old washing machines like this. They're not going to use it as a washing machine, but it makes a good flower pot. Yeah. And it's like my chickens I got all over the place. I got them stuck in everything in the shop, you know. <laughs> you and your chickens. You, got, you do have a lot of chickens. I love these old magazines, don't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I just love, look at that. Bob, Bob Hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was born in England. He said, yeah. they asked him why he moved to America. He said he finally couldn't be king. <laughs> <laughs> 
So what do you think? Well, I feel right at home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's just keep digging. There's got to be something here somewhere. Wow. Coca-Cola can. Look oh, this that. is fascinating. Table and chairs, all Coca-Cola. It is amazing the amount of Coca-Cola memorabilia that's out there. There are catalogs five inches thick of uh, all kinds of merchandise they've made through the years. It's great marketing. People love it. Uh, I've got several pieces at the office. They even have a six cent Coca-Cola machine at the is office. Is that right? Yeah, and, I, and I'm, I have to confess, I'm old enough to remember when they were a nickel. <laughs> Look at this thing. Jars like this are all over the place. This one has got the name all in the glass. It says this bottle is loaned and never sold five gallons. So, th so, so this, this, the company, this is theirs. That's, they want so that, it back right that's now. Yeah. Great Bear Spring. Yeah. I'm gonna see what she'll take for that. So one. We, they might sell it today. They might. Yeah. They might. <laughs> okay. Carl, you might like this section. I see some TV oh, stuff. Sure. There's a six million dollar man up there on top of that hey, shelf. Look at there. You, you, Those are amazingly valuable. There's a Marilyn sometimes. Monroe right oh, yeah. there. Yeah. A place like this is like a stamp collection. Yeah. It takes just as long to find a spot in the book to put a penny stamp as it does a thousand dollar stamp. It's just the hobby, the fun. Hey, Ken, I think I see something here. What's that? Davy Crockett. You know, this might be something that would be a perfect thing for Tom, because I know his whole thing is vintage TV show memorabilia. I've never seen this before. Neither have I. And it looks complete to me. Yeah, that might be your home run. He said, you're probably not going to find something I don't have. Well, how much is it? I don't know. There's not a price on it. So. Uh-oh, no price on it? Well, now, let me tell you. I mean, yeah. I, now, you know, you got to negotiate. All Remember right. what I said. If they ask 10, one eight take six worth for you, bid two. Say what? Let me tell you. Now, you know, you got to negotiate. All Remember right. what I said. If they ask 10, one eight take six worth for you, bid two. Yeah. But when there's no price to start with, yeah. beware if she says, uh, let me put your wallet on this scale over here. <laughs> That's when you need to start worrying. That's the sort of thing that uh, somebody walked in my door You'd be proud it to have It stay that. there if I had the money. Yeah. yeah. You might have found your nugget. Yeah, there we go. Now comes the fun part. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to haggle. Hey, Cookie. Did you find you something? We found a few things. This Davy Crockett outfit, I'm interested in it. Okay. It doesn't have a box, of course. It's certainly no. got some wear on it. And, but it looks fairly complete, but there's no price tag on it. What can we do this for, do you think? 145. 145. Mm -hmm. If it were in a box, I think that might be good, but it's not. I tell you what I do. I I, I would it, don't get mad, but I'd offer you fifty dollars for it. I don't think so. <laughs> no, that's golly day. That's a little bit way too much down. How about let's meet him halfway? Seventy-five. Eighty. Eighty. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Okay, time for reinforcements. Well, here, Carl, I've driven all the way up here with you. The least you can do is buy me something. Oh, my I mean, goodness. <laughs> you know, I mean, that is a fine-looking jug. That's the one you were looking at. Yeah, I saw that, and I'll have to confess, I kind of like that. Yeah. That's got to find out if I can afford it or not. I've got three ex-wives, <laughs> you know, so there's only a certain amount of cash flow around, you know. <laughs> it comes to 52. Yeah. Uh, I'll do 50. I'll tell you what, Carl's been good to me. He really has. I, I cannot tell you the kindnesses and things he's shown me through the years. How about if we just do this? We'll take it all and hit the door and send everybody we know up here to see you, okay? Is that a deal? Counting I, his stuff it, too? All of it. Cash money, no check. Can't miss. <laughs> Last chance. Shake on it. Hey, but you get tax. Oh. <laughs> Carl pays the tax. <laughs> wow, what a deal. What a deal. Now he's going to have this at his place, so that means you'll have to go up and visit, right? Oh, yes. Right. You'll yeah. have to do that. That's yeah, it. if I want to buy anything, I know how to deal <laughs> now. <laughs> this is going to a very special place. We've got a friend down in Salisbury named Tom Eyes. Now he collects old uh, vintage TV memorabilia. Are you we selling it to him? No, no, no. he's giving it's, it's it to him. It's a gift. He did some nice things for us, and so I'm, I'm you trying to You do have return. a kind heart. I do, okay. I do, <laughs> I do. All right, Cookie, this sounds great. All right, you know you know to call us. You got anything great, you know, and I'll come back and see you. Uh, okay. 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 Uh, Frank, good to see you. Likewise, sir. All right. Thank you now. See you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, okay, see you guys. Bye-bye. Have a safe trip.
Well, Kent, let's put this stuff in the trunk. Oh, yeah, on the way to Salisbury now. Do that like that. And I believe that'll be safe Dave, right, right, right there. there. He said, lift right. that up. You know, there I could get, go. I could get just a little addicted to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when we come back, you'll meet a guy as unique as the things he collects. Keep an eye out for me there, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving Pilot Mountain with our trophy in hand, Ken mentioned he knew another collector in Salisbury. I suppose uh, the most interesting character I've met so far in Salisbury would be one Mr. Clyde Overcash. What kind of fellow is he? I don't know how to begin to tell you. We'll have to go <laughs> see him. Uh, but I can assure you this, he's one like you hadn't met before. You'll enjoy the visit. All right. Clyde Overcash loves to learn about the past, which seems fitting since the house he lives in hey, was built lost. around 1840. I think we're looking for you. Come on in. Hey, how you doing, sir? You found me. We found you. Good I to can't see believe you. you found me. Good to see you again. Come right in. Are y'all looking for something out of the past? Well, anywhere. We got it. <laughs> you ever seen one? Y'all must be on the trail of the train. Yeah, we get, get to listen to those train whistles. Come on back here, boys. I find a lot of stuff in the yard, and you know, this is a prison site. What is this Mandels. over here, Clyde? Is that Those a... are just statues from the play, and I've got a cemetery over there. The lady that lived in this house took a prisoner home to nurse him from the prison. And of course, he died, and she buried him in the garden. Wow. A prison, so Civil War prisoners? Civil War prisoners, and I live on the prison site, so that's why you never know what you're going to find. Every uh -huh. day you might dig up something or... Somebody. Right, or somebody. <laughs> My goodness. Wow, this is incredible. Look at that wall down there, it's amazing. Okay. And the original railroad came through and they cut the bank down so it wouldn't have an incline so the uh, train could get through town. And they actually bought it right away of a street because most towns, the railroad is there first and the town builds up around the railroad. In this town, the streets were already here since 1755. Yeah. And it's amazing how that, that wall, 165, 70 years right. old, is still there holding it up. And it doesn't appear up, to be any mortar, it's just a matter of putting it in such a way that it stays, you know. Fascinating. It. Fascinating. Right. Hey, there it is. Now this is actually where you are today, is in this house. You're standing right here in this house, and this is there's the bridge right there, and there's right. the railroad track. So literally right across the track. Across the tracks. And then this house was not on the side of the prison, but across the street. So they would come over and drink water out of the wells. Mm -hmm. wow. and the gate of the prison was 40 yards from here. There was so, 16 acres, and they had guards at night. They would march around on a parapet, a wooden wall, wow. and their pictures and photographs, not photographs, they're actually prints that the prisoners drew that show what the prison looked like. And early on in the war, they would come to town, and, and they actually had money, their, their relatives or friends, would send them cash and they would go out into town and buy things. And they had a library, and had a garden, wow. and they did plays inside the prison walls. The prison was a Confederate camp built to hold 2,000 Union POWs. But near the end of the Civil War, over 11,000 were brought here, which created horrific conditions. This land, where you are and what you're close to, I mean, this is a, right. a very important piece of history. Well, kind of embarrassment for in a way for the people who lived here to have prisoners in town. And they yep. couldn't provide for them and most of them died. Uh, so that's okay. why it's a sad part of the right. history of, of the town. There were 2,000 people that lived in town and 10,000 prisoners. Wow. So they really couldn't do much for them. Right, it was just a, the, the numbers didn't balance right. out. Of how the commander wow. here sent word to Raleigh, do not send any more prisoners. Yeah. And guess what? They sent more prisoners. They sent more. They would come about 200 a day on the train and boxcars, they'd unload them and march them to the gate. And at 420, suppose, is when they loaded the, they loaded the dead wagon every day with all the dead people. And the other prisoners were responsible for throwing the other dead ones onto the wagon. And so, so you'd throw your buddies that were dead that day, you'd throw them on the wagon, and then they would go outside the gate. So one day a guy decided he would lay with the dead people all day. And they threw him in the dead wagon, and when they took the wagon out of the gate, he jumped up and ran away. Wow. So he that's escaped. One way, that's one way, one to, way to escape. And there's the National Cemetery up on that part, if you ever go there. It's, it was outside, it was in a cornfield. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hoorah in town gave them land to bury the, the uh, prisoners in their trenches. They were mass graves, there were 18 trenches. And the thing of it is, this is just 150 years ago. 
And was that prison open until the Civil War was completely over? Well, it was burned April the 14th, 1865. It was burned by General Stoneman. So it was intentionally burned out. Right. right. Actually, it was a couple of days after Appomattox, but nobody knew it. He burned most of the town on this side of the tracks, the warehouses, the distilleries, which there were many, many of them. Salisbury supplied the Confederacy with liquor. So this was the place? This was the place, and that it still says Salisbury's the place. And at one time it was called the wickedest and the wildest town this far west. <laughs> the wickedest and the wildest town this far west. That's I didn't know that. that part of history here. What have we got here, Carl? Well, I gotta tell you, he just keeps bringing us a few things to look at here, and I'm seeing things I've never seen before. Now you've seen a lot of Civil War stuff, Ken, but uh, well, and I've seen while, quite a bit. Once in a while I do in the garden I found, and here's a bullet I found in the garden, a Yankee bullet. So again, that was from here on your property? Yeah, found wow, in the property. You never know what you're going to find. Cruel That's bullet. real lead. Don't bite on it. Look at that, Ken. Try and they'd dig them out, of course. They'd get you little scalpels. Here's a tourniquet. You could tighten it down, make a tourniquet. Now that's a new one. I've never seen one of those. Well, that would just tighten down on your wound below, above the wound. And this is an invalid feeder if you were sick in the hospital and couldn't sit up. Right. This is a sick cup. So if okay. you were laying down prone, they'd pour it in. They'd pour it in you. Nice. And hope you get better. And if that, that, that didn't work, then you'd need the embalming fluid. The embalming fluid. <laughs> if this if that didn't fix work. anything, then you'd get right. the embalming fluid. Now these uh, prisoners were bad to, you know, you had a lot of time in prison. Right. And you would carve. This is made out of a piece of wood carved. Wow, look at that. You have a lot of carving time. So this was made uh, by a prisoner here? Maybe, we don't Maybe. know. I, I can't document that. But these are made out, made by the prisoners and they would use a locust tree and bend it and then they would trade these to the local residents okay, for food trade or whatever they wanted to. And you can eat locust pods and believe it or not, guess what? We still have locust trees that grow on the site. Wow. This crutch is interesting because it's made out of one piece of wood. They just took a, st a limb, uh -huh. split it down the middle and pried it open and made a crutch. Wow. And you wow. could always use your prosthetic leg. It's made out of wood, it's carved out of wood. It's look real heavy. That. You gonna try that on? Yeah, look at that. Wow. How you might like be pretty sure that, that camp. If you, maybe you had got shot in the eye, <laughs> they would provide <laughs> oh you with a prosthetic eye. These are real look glass eyes. Look at that. Pick your color. Yeah. Keep an eye out for me there, Carl. I'm sorry. Oh, that's 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 I, got, I got one out uh, for yeah. you. Ken, what color you need? Your, your eyes good? Blue. Blue. Like sky. And it has little veins and arteries so it would look real so nobody know you had a fake eye. I need one with an honest look in it. An honest look in it. Here, you get this one. You get one with two different colors. Oh, well. <laughs> and of course you take it out at night. You'd take it out and lay, night, it, lay it like your denture, denture. Like people that had dentures, you'd take your teeth and your eyes. Right. Or whatever else, or your leg, or whatever right. you didn't have that wasn't real. Well, we and can learn a lot from history, learn a lot from collecting. Wow, look at that. They say you spend half your life collecting and the other half getting rid of your collection. Well, I'm still collecting. I'm still on the first <laughs> half, I know you are. So that's we don't get part. rid of anything yet. No. I'm absolutely impressed that you've done this with your life and you're preserving these pieces, so I think that's fantastic. Well, you know, we've got another reason that we come to Salisbury. And we're going to see uh, Tom Eisenhower. Do you know Tom? I know him well. Yeah, well, we're, he's, got, he's quite the collector as well. I think we found something to put in this collection. Good. So I think so. I think so. And Clyde, I got to tell you, this uh, uh, I met you a few years ago, and uh, it was fascinating then. It's been fascinating today. And I truly do think that you're to be admired. I consider it kind of a calling to spend your life in the pursuit of holding on to history. Thank you, because sir. Because there's a lot of good reasons to do that, and I, for one, applaud you for it very Thank much. You, sir. You can start your own church. There you go. <laughs> if, if the newspaper business goes bad enough, I will. <laughs> when we come back, Tom's pretty much got it all. Did I find something he doesn't already have? The answer to that when we return. It had already been an incredible day, but our ultimate mission lay just ahead. If we found it, it's going to be good because he said, Carl, you probably won't find anything that I don't already have. <laughs> Tom Eisenhower is an amazing musician. We hope you enjoy our version of the Nine Pound Hammer. <laughs> he 
His performances have been highlights at our live shows, but he's also a prolific collector. I've never seen a little outfit like this in that condition. I think he'll be very pleased. You know, I've never seen one either, so I'm happy about that. Now, it's been two years since I've been here, so I don't know what all he's got. I understand he's got a lot more stuff, so I can't wait to see this myself. Well, look at here. Hey, Tom, how you What's doing? What's that, Carl? I ain't seen you a while, oh, it's man. It's been a while. All right. Good to Let's see do you. Tom's collection is nothing short of amazing. He's got big things and small things and everything in between. Each item carefully preserved and displayed. Wow, look at that. We uh, decided to expand out here, and this room became dedicated to the stars of the Grand Ole Opry that made the Grand Ole Opry what it is today. Wow. As a musician, Tom has a highly sought after collection with an in-depth knowledge of each item's history. And if you come up here, you're gonna see the what we call the Wax Museum part of the show. Wow, look at that, Ken. Oh my goodness. Hey, is that your, that's your nudie suit? That's, that's the one I had made for me. Uh, yeah. You remember the Don Gibbs? Yeah, that's show. the one you wore. That's the one I wore. And uh, Mr. Manuel in Nashville made this for me. Okay. Uh, so he was the one that you had told me that had Did a lot of the news for the okay. Porter Wagner and yeah. all the Opry stars. He moved from Los Angeles to Nashville. Yeah, and he designed yours. He designed mine. <laughs> he designed Elton John's suit. That's a nudie suit for Elton John. You think so. he could design one for Ken? Well, he'd have to talk to him. He talks to the person, then he watches you on stage, and then he designs what he wants for you to have. Like, no telling what George looks like. <laughs> well, he might do a shorts. He may do a shorts because he, he, he shorts, wanted right? me to have the long cut coat yeah. instead of the, the shorter. You have to work on my shoes a little bit too. Well, he looked at my build and how I stand on stage. I had to play for him, and he talked. He's a psychologist. Oh, well. so this is psychologically this is designed. This psychologically for you. designed for me. It's got. How uh, do you feel when you wear it? Oh. Like a million dollars. All of it was impressive, but today there was one room in particular I was eager to see. This is Tom's collection of TV memorabilia. You'll notice the sign here, Santa welcomes you to Toyland. <laughs> Since you were here, I don't know, a couple years ago, I've just kept adding and adding, and I am absolutely running out of space. This was her toys growing up, and this is my toys, and we filled these two shelves and then just grew out from there. Uh, my main source was antique malls, antique shows. Flea markets and garage sales are kind of gone now. Right. You don't really find good stuff there. Uh, the higher end collectible shows, I do find a lot of stuff. Are there still a lot of things you're looking for? I say there's not much. I, I'm about counting on my hands. Stuff I'm really looking for and there's not much left yeah. to do that. Well, maybe we can find something. Well. I'm still looking, I'm still looking. Yeah, we come in here, we're a little bit more collected. Still yeah. Americana going on with the bumper car and the gas pump, barber chair. And all your Westerns. I've got, not every Western show, but the majority of them. There's a few little oddballs I still don't have. I certainly have the major ones. So you have a, a large uh, Western collection? Well, I'd say it's large. I try to get a representative sample from each show that okay. I can. Hey, what about uh, Davy Crockett? Davy was big. See, the thing about Davy, you had Fess Parker, who was not only Davy Crockett, he was also Daniel Boone. But see, you have Fess Parker as Daniel Boone, and then Davy Crockett. He played both of them, played both parts. original and in, in their entirety. Is that an important collection? Oh, I have a collection back over here. I have a pretty good sized collection. Don't have everything, but I, I have a, enough. Well, hold on, Tom. I might have something for you. From Davy or I Daniel might. Boone? I might. Hold on. Daniel Boone hold or Davy? On. Now you get my interest. Tom seemed to have just about everything. What were the chances I'd find anything he didn't already have? Well, it was time to find out. Well, Tom. Wow. Now, I don't know if you got this, but you, you said to me one time, yeah. you probably can't find anything I'm looking for because there's not that much. There's not that much. But now this is a Davy Crockett, as I best I can tell, yep. a full outfit. From the 50s. I can tell that just by looking at the style. It should have a label. Oh, yeah, the Texan. That's it, with the, with the with, coon skin. With the coon skin hat. The whole thing. Did you and have this? No, but you're not going to believe this. Wow. I have an empty box to put this in. <laughs> you, really? <laughs> so you have the box. And, hold that. All right. How random could that be? I know. As soon as I saw that, I thought box. Mm. 
Woodsman Scout outfit. Authentic. There's the outfit right here, just like you see it there. See the fringe? Yeah, yeah. And the logo, and I'm gonna have to take this out of the plastic. To show it. Sometimes you need to protect in plastic. Just to... That's good money spent. Yeah. Because the box is very fragile. This box is almost as old as I am. So these, these boxes. Okay. Oh so my here goodness. we have we have everything that came with the outfit, but that. You've got it all but the outfit. All but that. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at so that. So you just now completed a collection that I had started and have never found the outfit that went in here. See the, the, the logo here? Yeah. It's the same as the logo there. And this is the gun that came with the outfit, went in the little holster. Yeah. She's carrying on the front here. And the suit would have gone underneath here. You would have put that underneath here. It went in there, and then the hat was probably on the outside here. I don't know how that's attached. I can smell the old in it. <laughs> but now I can call this set Mint in the Box. Wow, that's amazing. I've, I've never seen a full set. So we brought you something you've never seen. Before. I've never seen a full set. I've never seen a full set. Now you'll see the hat by itself. Yeah. You may see just the jacket by itself, right. but the entire outfit no, sir, that's something you don't find. And this was not a Halloween costume, but you could have used it as one. This was, this was to play in outside. You were pretending to be Davy Crockett. And you had the whole outfit. But this is a, the whole scout outfit. Look at that. All that goes in the hat would have been up there like that. And there's the horn that he yeah. blew, you know. Yeah, the, yeah. All this from, I'm gonna guess 1954, maybe earlier than that, but possibly 52. Some boxes are dated, some are not. This is not dated, but I'll bet you they only sold this outfit a few years. That suit found its home. That suit just now found a home. Wow. And Mr. Davy is now mint in the box. How is that? I love it when random things like that come together. That's amazing. <laughs> that's you know? Carl, that's thank amazing. you very much that's for that. Amazing, I mean, that's Tom. unbelievable. You that's knew great. That, that was there. Tom? Awful good seeing you again. Come back see me again. I will, I will, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks for completing. <laughs> you know, it's obvious these guys have a great passion for collecting, and I'm just glad with, well, Davy Crockett, I could help complete one of them.